Hey everyone, we've got another Rock 4 video for you today and this time we'll be putting the board through its paces with a real world application. And having a look around the internet, I've seen that there's quite a few IoT based applications already on video out there. And that's good because the board is really good for IoT applications. But this time I want to remember that our board is also a Linux computer and as such it makes an ideal home server. Even better than that, as our ARM processors on our Rockchip device support virtualization, we can run containerized services using Docker. And that's exactly what we'll be doing today. So let's get to it. But before we run up some containerized applications, there could be a couple of questions forming in your mind, especially if you're not familiar with this technology. The most obvious question might be just what are these containers and why should I want one? Now both of these are good questions, and to answer them we need to start by thinking about virtual machines. On any given server, at the base layer we have our hardware, the physical tangible stuff that we plug in and power up to run our software applications. Now technically we have an operating system running on the machine, but in terms of virtual machine applications this isn't of particular interest to us, so we'll just acknowledge that it's there and move on to what is important to us, the hypervisor. Now a hypervisor, like VirtualBox or VMware, is sometimes called a virtual machine monitor and it's a software that creates and runs virtual machines. These virtual machines are called guest machines and are usually full operating systems like a Linux distribution or Windows and these operating systems think that they're running on real hardware but instead are presented with a virtual platform by the hypervisor which has divvied up the real hardware between the guest operating systems to service their needs when they're running. This abstraction of the physical hardware has a number of advantages for applications. Firstly, each guest is isolated from the others, so if anything untoward happens, like getting malware or being hacked or just crashing, this operating system does not affect any of the others. This isolation also means we can build a running application on a guest machine and ship the entire environment off to another computer anywhere in the world. And as long as it's running the same hypervisor, it'll just work, because the application has been shipped along with all its dependencies, such as libraries and other essential software. The downside is that virtual machines run a full operating system so they can take some time to boot up and they need to hog at least the minimum hardware requirements for that particular operating system so they can be somewhat resource heavy. Containers on the other hand take a slightly different approach towards a similar end. Here the host operating system is important to us because unlike a hypervisor that virtualizes hardware, the Docker engine virtualizes the operating system. And the upshot of that is that each container is an isolated environment for running an application, but only the absolutely necessary dependencies are included in a container image. Containers use the host operating system kernel to execute their hardware requirements. The advantage of this approach is that containers generate a complete environment that is much more lightweight in terms of size and resource use. This means they're much faster to start or stop, and it often takes only a few seconds to run up a new container. And as the hardware resources aren't pre-allocated to a container, hundreds of containers can be run up in parallel on a typical server. So then, lightweight, quick starting, scalable and guaranteed to just work applications is why you would want to run containers. And it's why most web-based services run on them these days too. If we head over to Docker Hub, which is a bit like a GitHub for containerized applications, we can get an idea of the breadth of what is available in the repositories. If we click here on Explore, we'll find a list of the available images. So Alpine, that's a lightweight Linux distribution. Uh, Nginx, that's a web server. I think you know what Ubuntu is. Uh, there's Python. Uh, we've got an SQL server, Node.js, uh, Node for JavaScript uh, backend applications. Uh, there's the Apache web server, MongoDB, MySQL. Uh, Docker. We even have Docker inside of Docker, so uh, that could be fun. Hello world, of course. Uh, we've got Golang, uh, WordPress, CentOS, Debian, 
and it goes on and on. In fact, there are literally thousands of images available for pretty much anything you might want to do on a server. So with all that containerized goodness available, let's get over to our Rock 4 board and install Docker. Right, so here we are on a nice fresh installation of Ambien on my Rock Pi 4 SE. So I've opened a terminal and we're going to install Docker. What I'll do is I'll zoom in so that we can have a closer look at what I'm doing. And as usual, we'll start by making sure we're fully up to date with our software. So we'll do that with sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade and yes we want to do that password and yay right so that's going to take a little while so i'll come back when it's done okay so now we're up to date we can install docker with sudo apt install docker.io and we may as well also install docker compose as well while we're at it now docker compose is a container management tool that allows you to perform group actions on multiple containers at the same time and yes, we want to install that. And I'll just use the magic of editing to speed this process up. And we'll be done in no time. Okay, so we've all installed. Let's run Docker version and see what version we've got. Okay, so what that's doing is reminding me that this was installed as the root user. So what I'll do now is change the group settings so I can use Docker from my standard user as of Redstone. And first, what we'll have to do uh, is become the root user. So that's SU and then my password. And that hash prompt tells us we're the root user now. And then we'll use user mod to put Docker in my user group. So that's user mod minus ag docker and redstone. So we can now exit. And if we check the groups, we'll see that I'm not there because this groups file is only read right at the beginning of the boot up process. So what I'll have to do is reboot and I'll be back in a second. Okay, back again. And if we now type groups, we can see that Docker has been added to our groups. So now we can use Docker commands. So now if I run the version command, we get our information without any errors. Well, hey. And now that's working without any permission errors, I'm gonna check that everything is working as it should. And to do that, of course, we're gonna use hello world. And that's docker run hello world. And as I don't have the hello world container locally, docker is gonna pull it from docker hub, build it and run it for me. And there's our message, hello from docker. <laughs> Hello world in all its glory. Okay, so hello world proves our setup is working, but it isn't very interesting for users. What we want to do now is install something we can interact with in a client server scenario. And to do that, we're going to install a meta search engine called CircsNG. Okay, so you're probably thinking CircsNG, that's nice, but why? The short answer is privacy. You see, when you're sitting at home and you perform a search with any of the usual search engines, they collect a lot of data to add to the profile they already have on you. And I'm afraid incognito modes don't help you. And even supposedly privacy-oriented sites like DuckDuckGo aren't immune to the lure of money. They have some sort of tracking deal going on with Microsoft. So, what do we do if we don't like that? We put something like CircsNG between us and the search engines. The way we do that is we install a server that we control 
Now this could be on a VPS or our own device. CircsNG itself is a free open source fork from the original Circs project. As a meta search engine, it aggregates results from over 70 search services, which is great in itself, but even better for every search you do, CircsNG builds a random search profile. What that means is that none of your private data goes to the search engines. It also blocks all trackers and advertising from third parties, while making sure that none of your data is shared with the results pages either. Pretty neat, huh? The only downside of hosting this server on our own home network is that our IP address still gives up some information about us, like where we live for instance. But we can mitigate this by using a VPN or Tor to hide our IP address. OK, so now we know why we like CircsNG, we're going to install a complete multi-container application that includes a web server and networking between the containers. So first off, we'll change into the directory that we want to put it in, and that will be... So we'll put it in user local, and then we're going to want to clone from git, and from that address. And so we've got CircsNG cloned, and if we see what we've got, OK, we can see we've got a circsng docker directory there. So we'll change into that. And we can have a little look at what we've got in this directory. Let's have a look. Well, a docker tutorial is somewhat outside what we're doing today, but it's probably worth explaining that each container has a file. It's literally called docker file that details to the build engine how the container should be built from the image. Now, the docker-compose.yaml file that you can see here is like the make file for the entire application, and that lays out how all the containers fit together. If I just uh, zoom out here for a moment, we can open up the yaml file and have a look at it. In here, we can find the description for the build of each of the containers. There's caddy, redis, and down here is CircsNG, and we can see that CircsNG is exposing port 8080 to on the local host. The YAML file format is quite a lot like Python in a way, in that YAML uses indents as delimiters rather than brackets. OK, so now we know what the file looks like. We'll just close that down and we'll zoom back into our workspace. And before we can build this project, there are a couple of edits that we need to make. The first of these is in the settings file, and we can find that by going into the CircsNG directory. So let's do that now. And if we look, there's our settings file. Now, what we want to do here is add an SSL key to support HTTPS connections. And we can do that with the OpenSSL tool. And we do that by typing X. OK, so there's our key. And what we'll do is we'll copy that. Ooh, there we go. Copy. And if we now open our settings file, where it says ultra secret key so we're going to go down to there and we're going to replace this with our secret key and we can save yep and yep and if we go back down a level and list that out the other file that we need to edit is the .env file. But in order to do that, we're going to need to know our IP address. And we find that out with, and there it is, 192.168.1.203. So we'll make a mental note of that, and we'll go into our .env file. And what we want to do here is uncomment this to start with. And then we're going to put our host address here. So that was 
0.1.203 and that's all we need to change really so we'll save that yep and now we're ready to build and it's super simple all we need is So there we go, we can see Docker is now pulling all the images it needs from Docker Hub and it's setting them up as needed for our app to build properly. This can take a long time the first time we run the app with all that pulling and building so I'm going to speed this up a little bit and get to the end as fast as we can. So our containers are now running, uh, what I probably should have done is use the minus D switch to run that as a daemon in the background. But if we zoom out now, I can open up our web browser and on localhost here we can see our search engine is running. And let's try it out. Let's uh, look for something. Let's look for and there's our results. And we can see that we've got them from Google, from Wikidata, Quant. Not sure what Quant is. I don't think I've used that before. DuckDuckGo. So you can see our results are aggregated from quite a few different servers. Fantastic. And if I just swap over to my laptop now, we can check that it works from here. We've got search ng, and let's uh, look for something interesting like, oh, I don't know, coffee. And again, we have our search results. So I can search from different computers on my network. Well, I hope this little adventure with Docker containers has given you something to think about when it comes to using your Rock 4 boards as home servers. There are endless other applications to explore on Docker Hub, so why not give it a go? That's it for today's video, except to say stay safe and see you soon.